Hello, my name is Yapoki Yibo. I am the author of Anansi's Gold, and I will be reading from chapter 6 of the book. Dr. John Acker Blameser stepped out of the limousine onto an icy stretch of Broad Street. Blay had arrived in Philadelphia with a brand new name. He was welcomed by a frigid, bright winter day. Glancing up Broad Street, he looked with some satisfaction at the Red Brick Union League Club, then to the marble and granite grandeur of Philadelphia City Hall, all the way up to the statue of William Penn perched on the roof. The cold air caught his throat and made him feel alive. He had arrived. He ambled into the lobby of the Bellevue Stratford Hotel, introduced himself as a member of Ghana's delegation to the United Nations, and charmed the desk clerk. The doctor also presented a letter. It explained that he was a diplomat and that any charges would be settled by the Ghanaian embassy in Washington, DC. The diplomat was escorted to a large suite he rather liked looking down on the city from his perch high up in the hotel, biting on an unlit cigar. Dr. Blameser settled into life at the Bellevue Stratford. He spent his days being driven around in the limousine with diplomatic flags, trailing a full rent new and running small time cons all over Philadelphia. His chauffeur would open the door and he would step out into the snow, draped in heavy ochre kente cloth and just stand there like he had all the time in the world, the quiet center of a flurry of activity. Traffic would halt. Passers-by would stop dead in the middle of the pavement and gawk. For years after, people would talk about the African prince who came to town and took meetings with some of the wealthiest and best connected residents of Philadelphia. He was said to be selling gold straight from the motherland. And he apparently had a great number of takers. Wealthy investors would hand over large sums of money and to celebrate, the prince would show them a great time in Philadelphia. They apparently had no idea he was entertaining them with their own money. In the evenings at the Bellevue Stratford, the tables were laid with silver and the dining room was lit with flickering candles and chandeliers. Philadelphia's high society gathered in for dinner in the hunt room the women with their bouffant hairdos and the men in their double-breasted blazers to remind themselves that despite what was going on outside, they still had a great deal of money. Blameser made fast friends and reminisced about his days in the University of Pennsylvania. Sometimes he would lead the other guests in the pen fight song. Dinner was served on gold room china at the top of each plate inside a gilded wreath with the letters B, S.